What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on SAT Math from the Scalar Learning Channel. This video is one that has been requested many, many times and I finally put together something for you guys and this is all about how to study for the math portion of the SAT. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Josefa Capadia and I'm the founder of Scalar Learning, but more importantly, I'm a private math tutor in the city of Los Angeles. Tutoring mathematics is my life. There's no other way to put it. It's all I do. It's everything that I'm obsessed with and and as such, I need to preface this video as follows. Tutoring and tutoring specifically for standardized tests is an art. There is no one size fits all formula for everybody. It takes a lot of calibration and consideration. So what I'm trying to do in this video is to the best of my ability, give you the tools and the general processes that I use with my students when I'm trying to tutor them for success. And if you do this independently, you're gonna have to do your best to try and make those calibrations on your own. It's not gonna be easy, but I know a lot of you, this is what you have. This is what you have available to yourself so hopefully you can take the tips that I'm giving you and the general schedule and outline and apply it for success. Now again, this video is a little bit challenging because not everybody starts with the same time frame. We have people that sometimes come to this channel a week before the test with no preparation, which I don't recommend whatsoever. And then sometimes we have people with a three month timeline, a six month timeline, or a year timeline, something along those lines. We're gonna break down the study plan in four different groups, starting with as short as one week and as long as 12 weeks. And then I'll show you how to extrapolate that out if indeed you do have a greater period of time to study, which is again, recommended. Before we begin, I just want to say one more thing that I think is super important when it comes to standardized tests, specifically on the math sections. These are not tests of intelligence as I think a lot of people tend to believe. They are skilled tests. They are tests about your ability to understand the mathematics and apply your knowledge. The amazing thing about that is it's not as though the score is immovable. Contrary to that, you can make great improvements and achievements on this test if you put your head down and really put in the work. The knowledge is out there and the power is within your hands. So I encourage you, if you want it badly enough, take the reins, go after that information, put in the practice reps and achieve your dreams. First, we're gonna start with the one week plan. So this is in the worst case scenario, which again, I do not recommend only spending one week, but assuming you come to the test a week before and to say, hey, I didn't have time to prep, now I gotta prep. Here's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna ask that you put in seven consistent days in a row with a lot of time spent prepping for this section. Again, this doesn't even include English, so you're gonna have to plan accordingly, but if you're just prepping for the math, this is what you're gonna do. Day one, you're gonna take that practice test on the Khan Academy website that is free and it's gonna give you your baseline score. Day two, you're gonna watch my series on the critical concepts for the SAT math portions. That's gonna run down every single category and topic that you need to know and understand to perform your absolute best. The next day, you're gonna watch my video series on effective strategies for how to master each and every one of the 41 topics in math covered on the SAT. And then the following two days, you're gonna hit Khan Academy practice problems as hard as possible. Now again, this is considered targeted practice because these practice problems are, are broken down by category type. Now, if you take in the original diagnostic on Khan Academy, it's gonna naturally guide you towards the topics which prove to be more problematic for you. Since you only have two days to do this, double down, triple down, quadruple down, whatever you have to do and nail as many of these topics as possible. The next day, you're gonna hit another practice test, take practice test number three, and then you're gonna spend that last day reviewing all your mistakes and hitting more targeted practice before the real thing. Now we come to the four week plan, which is a little bit more manageable, but not what I recommend. That being said, there are folks who can prep in a few weeks and do really well, but you don't know until you get your baseline. So if you only allot four weeks and then you come to that first diagnostic and you're like, oh man, I need a lot more time to hit my target score, you're in trouble. So instead, if you plan carefully to give yourself that nice six month or year long time frame, you can see and maybe you're in that small subcategory where you only need a month. And if that's the case, cool, but otherwise you have the extra time in case you need it. So the four week plan is gonna require you to take two tests every week leading up to the test. As you can see, everything in purple is an official practice test from the College Board, which is my preferred resource. The test walkthroughs that are given the day after are our videos where we take these official College Board tests and solve them in real time, explaining as we go along how to 
tackle each question. My recommendation is if you have the time, regardless of whether or not you've gotten certain questions right or wrong, I would watch those tests in their entirety. The reason why is that even if you get some of these questions right, it's worthwhile to check out how I'm doing them because maybe you can adopt some of my strategies and it might improve your speed, it might improve your understanding, etc. All those green sections have to do with targeted practice, primarily from Khan Academy in this case, but you notice now I don't say Khan Academy because with four weeks, you can mix in different resources if you have them. For example, for targeted practice, I have three resources that I recommend. First, of course, is free is Khan Academy, as I mentioned in the previous plan. These are gonna be great up to about level three and level four. So there's four levels. Level three and level four are generally a lot harder than the real SAT. Some level three stuff is actually pretty good, but definitely when you get to level four, I'm not so convinced that these are gonna accurately represent what's gonna be on the SAT, and that's what I've seen from experience. Instead of hitting those higher levels, I would recommend mixing in College Panda exercises as well as math exercises from Pawn the SAT. Take a careful look at the questions that you're missing or that are problematic, and then find those same question types and categories within these other two resources. Once again, my job as a tutor, if I were to work with you, would be to constantly calibrate and look and see it. Oh, you've gotten stronger in this one. Oh, this one's still weak. We need to give you more practice problems here. So if you're gonna study on your own, the onus is on you to do this analysis and keep looking and seeing what is problematic and what is getting easier. Focus on those problem areas and then keep the rhythm and routine of continually doing practice tests. Just a quick note, the reason why the practice tests are so important is because the College Board does not sway that much from this general prototype, this general pattern of test questions and wording and so on and so forth. That's the beauty of a standardized test. It is a certain system, a certain layout that is going to be there over and over. So if you get enough practice tests under your belt, you're going to naturally start to feel really comfortable with the questions, what they're asking, how to approach them, etc. It's almost like you get a sixth sense in terms of how to approach these problems because you've seen this general pattern and rhythm so many times. Next, we come to the eight week plan. You notice things are a little bit more spaced out and now we've limited it down to one practice test a week. You can relax the pace of the practice test just a touch and instead now devote more time to targeted practice. Now, if you're at a point where you're scoring really high already and there's really not that much targeted practice you need to do, okay, now you can weave in some more practice tests and maybe instead of doing eight in this eight week period, you can do 10, 12, 14. And as I'll show in the next plan, the first place you're gonna wanna go to find extra practice tests is gonna be College Panda. Finally, we come to the 12 week plan. So we see that it's similarly laid out except now we've layered on top of those eight practice tests, test one through four from College Panda. And again, in the red, we have the video walkthroughs. Now, just like I have the official walkthroughs, I also have the College Panda walkthroughs for tests one through 10. So you're gonna take the test and then the next day, watch my video walkthrough. In another video that I've made, which talks about all of the best SAT math resources, which you can check up here, I do mention that I recommend official practice tests ahead of College Panda if possible. But in this case, in this shortened timeline, the reason why I'm going to College Panda first is because the thing I like about College Panda is those tests are a bit harder than the College Board test. Not too much harder, but a bit harder where it challenges you just that extra amount. I've noticed that with my students, when they hit those College Panda tests and then they go back to the official test, it feels like a breath of fresh air. And that level change is often what pushes them over the edge to achieve their SAT math goals. Now, when we talk about larger lengths of time, like instead of 12 weeks, we've got 24 weeks, or we've got even a full year to prepare, the way you're gonna modify this plan is simply expand it out. But we wanna keep that rhythm and that routine of taking a practice test a week. But now you can complete all 10 of the College Panda tests. Now you can add in the official practice tests that you can find on Reddit, the ones that have been officially released. Now we can start to use McGraw-Hill's resource, Princeton Review, so on and so forth. So we're just building onto our arsenal of all these practice resources. The other thing is when we take six months or nine months or a year, you don't have to go at such a hardcore pace. You can take some days off, you can ease into it. It can be more fun and exciting and interesting because you don't have that panic or that stress of the time. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please click that like button. And if you wanna see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.